and he pointed for me to stand on this raised piece of ground and so I stood on 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 this this piece of uh, ground elevated above everybody and he went off and he went off over a hill and I'm standing there thinking what's going on and I'm looking around and I noticed there were some rocks and some pebbles and some stones and I thought oh my goodness it's the stoning corner I'm going to be stoned to death and he's gone over the hill now to get a crowd of people he's probably over there now saying quick hurry we've got a westerner stoning in 10 minutes time and um, I'm standing there frozen with fear obviously you can tell as a tabloid journalist I believed every word that had been written about people from uh, from Afghanistan and about the the, the Taliban and uh, I was really shaking with fear. I looked down at my feet and I'd lost my shoes and socks. All I could see was blood red nail varnish and I thought if they see the colour of nail varnish also banned under the Taliban, they'll chop my toes off one by one before they start the stoning. I don't know what it is about Afghanistan uh, and uh, you can be in a totally deserted area, nobody around for miles and 30 seconds later there's a crowd. Who they are or where they come from I have no idea but within half a minute or so there was a crowd of angry looking men who would gathered around, maybe a hundred and they were coming closer and closer. And I'm standing on this raised piece of ground just looking down at them and I'm trying to find a kind face in the crowd, somebody who will stand up, somebody who will be my hero and, and, and they, I couldn't find this kind face and I started thinking that, you know, this is it, this is the end, I'm going to die and, and, and the most horrendous death. And so my next instinct as a practicing Christian was to drop to my knees and start praying. And I thought, oh, I don't want to do that. That will really start them off because um, they're Muslims. And as soon as I kneel down and start praying, and as this train of thought was going, I remembered as a Sunday school teacher telling children about how Jesus stopped a stoning. And he, he said to a crowd, let him without sin cast the first stone. And I thought, that's it. This is what I'm going to say to these people. The fact that they wouldn't have understood me was, you know, I, hadn't, I was in panic mode. I wasn't thinking rationally. So I'm standing there and I'm about to say this grand saying, let him without sin cast the first stone. And I noticed these three old men uh, right at the back with big long white beards and I looked at them and I thought no if I say this they'll probably say that's us and they'll start the stoning early. <coughs> Just then the soldier returned over the hill and he didn't have a crowd of people with him he had one woman wearing a burqa and she came up behind me and she swung me back round and she started to frisk me so I had my back to the crowd and she's patting me down and I thought oh he went off not to get a crowd but to find a woman who could search me I'm not going to die well not immediately anyway and all the fear that I had felt for those few minutes just evaporated and I was overwhelmed with relief but that relief quickly turned to anger when I realized that those men behind had made me feel as though I was seconds away from death. So I pulled away from the woman and I swung back round to the men and I'm standing there in a traditional shalwa kameez, the trousers and the dress and I picked up the hem of my dress and I said to the men, I'm not carrying any weapons, look! And I lifted my <laughs> dress up which provoked a, 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 a reaction across the, the men. They all collectively had a sharp intake of breath <gasps> and then they all turned round and ran in the other direction <laughs> so the devil was snapping at their heels 
I don't know how many of you have seen the old Carry On films, but there's one called Carry On at the Khyber, where the Scottish regiment lift up their kilts to the locals and they run. It was just like that when I said, of course, this was highly inappropriate behaviour for a woman in Afghanistan, and the lady wearing the burqa swung me back around and whacked me over the face. She was so shocked at this vulgar gesture. Having established I wasn't carrying any weapons, I was then taken to Jalalabad and held by Taliban intelligence for six days. I was terrified. Every day I would wake up thinking, is this my last day on earth? Every night I would go to sleep thinking, is this my last night on earth? Looking back now, I realise that all the fear that I felt was manufactured up here because, in fact, the Taliban treated me with a courtesy and respect I hadn't expected at all. On the first day, they asked me to write some details to prove who I was, to prove that I was a journalist, and after I had performed that task, they then invited me to sit and eat with them. And I said, well, I really need to use the telephone. And they said, no, this is impossible. And so I said, well, until I can use the telephone, I'm not eating as a guest or a prisoner of the Taliban. Now, you would think that they couldn't care less whether I ate or not. But every morning, noon and night, they would come into my room, they would lay out a cloth, they would bring in fresh smelling um, hot bread, uh, some rice and some stew. They would bring in a jug of water and a bowl and they would wash my hands and they would tell me, you were our guest, you were our friend. And I'm thinking, what's going on here? Why are they trying to soften me up and be nice to me? By the third day of not eating, um, a doctor came. I felt quite well, but the doctor was called and he looked in my eyes, my ears, put a thermometer in my mouth, took my uh, pulse and, and started taking my blood pressure. And I thought, they do this, don't they, on death row? Just before they execute somebody, they like, for some bizarre reason, to make sure they're fit and healthy. And I thought, this is what he's doing. And something bothered him about my blood pressure, and he took it again. And I said, yes. I have high blood pressure. And he said, no, your blood pressure is normal. I said, it can't be normal. I've been captured by the Taliban. And he took it again and showed me, and it was normal. And I said, well, there you go. Three days with the Taliban. You've cured my blood pressure. Thank you very much. On the sixth day, my uh, translator, a young man called Hamid, came running in to see me and he was waving a newspaper and he said, you're famous, you're famous. And he showed me the local Jalalabad paper in the Pashtun language. And although photographs were banned, there were two pictures of me on the front page from the Reuters news agency and a, a front page story, but the headlines were across the whole page with this tiny little story at the bottom. And I said, what do the headlines say? And he said, the headline says that the Taliban have cured Yvonne Ridley's blood pressure and she's very happy. <laughs> so maybe they were starting to learn the art of uh, spin at that stage. This, uh, this day was a very strange day, the sixth day. I mentioned Hamid before, and uh, Hamid had the misfortune to be able to speak English, Pashto and Urdu. And so he was parachuted in to act as my translator. And I said before that I was convinced I was going to be executed. I was convinced that each day was my last. So on the, the grounds that you don't kiss the hand that, uh, that slaps you, I had decided to be the prisoner from hell. And so during the so-called interrogations that we had, I was rude, I was obnoxious, and poor Hamid had to do the translating and he said to me one day these people terrify me and they should terrify you will you please be more respectful so on the sixth day Hamid came to see me his mouth was so dry with fear he could hardly talk and he said you have a very important visitor 
and I said, who is it? He said, please, before he comes, you must be respectful. Please promise me you will be respectful to this person. And I said, but who is 